one of the vital areas in which the space has made an impact. The combined power of the communication as well as the earth observation is put to use. The, in case of a flood or a cyclone, uh, one is able to make observation as to the extent of damage and uh, make uh, an assessment and help the district authorities to intervene in such affected areas. But recently we have introduced a system in which uh, advance warning also could be issued. The satellite images uh, analyzed uh, at least 24 hours before are uh, disseminated to the various uh, disaster prone areas and the warning to areas where the possibility of a cyclone heat is there and by evacuating the people from those regions you save a lot of lives. Same thing applies to the flood uh, also. Uh, uh, the, where the heavy precipitation is possible and based on the runoff models one can predict as to which areas make it inundated so this information will be very valuable. In addition using the GIS techniques we are evolving a system of uh, by which a database is created so we know in advance the disaster from areas and uh, how the, the planning has to be done by the district authorities and so on. So this system is uh, right now in place and um, we hope uh, this will serve the, uh, the, com the country in the coming years. Next one please. Using the technology of digital connectivity, the earth observation and also the local wisdom which could be harnessed, um, we try to evolve a concept what's called a village resource center. Here actually the, the digital connectivity is made use of for making available the information to the villagers uh, about their natural resources, how it can be properly utilized and so on and uh, they can plan for water harvesting and also work out the means of drinking water projects and so on. Uh, but more important than that is um, what how the same terminal doubles up for telemedicine and teleeducation purposes. So here the, the, the medical practitioners may be far away but the villagers can access to the latest uh, medical service sitting almost virtually at their doorstep the tele-education provides for other literacy program or the skill development which is okay by the villagers and uh, also it goes towards the, the forecast, the disaster warning forecast and so on. So this concept has uh, initially we started as a pilot project and has caught up. Uh, today it is serving more than about uh, 400 uh, cluster of villages in the country. Each cluster may have about uh, 10 villages in the thing. But still the coverage has to be enhanced and we believe that it will become a powerful tool for reaching out to the farthest place in the country like ours. Next one. While doing the, uh, the development of high technology, the building the satellites and application program, we do a little bit of space science also. Um, well, uh, the Chandrayaan has been the culmination of uh, such a mission. And we have in the near future what is called a megatropics. It is a joint experiment between the Indian Space Research Organization and the CNES, the French Space Agency, uh, wherein we are going to have a set of instruments in a low Earth orbiting satellite which will be looking at the tropical weather related phenomena. The humidity profile, the wind vector, the cloud motion, all such parameters are captured and this is going to real time modeling as to the near casting of the weather in the tropical region. The tropical climate is uh, least understood and I am sure that this input is going to be a very powerful one as far as the researchers in the weather and climate is concerned. Of course, uh, while looking at the earth, we thought the similar instruments with better precision and better resolution could be turned towards the skies, the galaxies, the stars and beyond. The AstroSat is uh, such a concept which has come out is uh, going to be a multi-wavelength uh, astronomical satellite put into operation for the scientific purposes and the scientific pursuit, uh, perhaps trying to understand the fundamentals related to the origin of the universe and how it is expanding and so on. So these uh, missions again provide an opportunity for the space sciences to wet their hands on very sophisticated tools and apply them uh, for understanding the nature and the universe in a better manner. 
Next one, please. This Chandrayaan has been uh, one of the missions where I think uh, we have uh, really put together a host of instruments, perhaps the largest combination of instruments which has brought a synergy not only between the Indian scientists but with the international community. There are instruments from NASA, there are instruments from ESA and the European countries also. So uh, totally there were 11 instruments going on board simultaneously and for, with an objective of uh, trying to get a total mapping of the lunar surface with a much higher resolution than what it has achieved in the past. These imaging systems have got a resolution uh, going down to better than 5 meters and uh, then there is a host of instruments looking at the right from the infrared band and uh, all the way up to the uh, X-rays and gamma rays so which uh, provides a unique input as to map the minerals which are on the surface of the moon. Next one please. This is okay in the mission, the PSLV has been the launcher which is used, which places the spacecraft into an elliptical orbit of about 22,000 kilometers apogee. From there we use the satellite propulsion to take it uh, further in steps, uh, travel with the aim of traveling to nearly 384,000 kilometers to reach the moon. Um, well, the, when the moon um, was at the time of launch, the moon was suddenly 14 days away from the rendezvous point and we had to really evolve a mission strategy by which we will arrive at the point of insertion to the lunar orbit. And uh, to the credit of the Indian mission uh, community, it goes that uh, finally we arrived at the moon with a precision better than 10 kilometers. And uh, this, uh, I believe, for the first time for a country, a developing country in such areas, uh, this is the highest level of precision one can expect. There is a deep space tracking network near here, which is keeping in touch with the spacecraft, and that has commanded the spacecraft to uh, reduce the velocity and get into the lunar orbit. And uh, initially, it was in a 7,500 by 500 kilometer orbit. Later it was slowly brought down to some like 100 km orbit and at 100 km orbit it is doing stop. Uh, while uh, we reach the final orbit, uh, we have uh, detached a small module called the Moon Impact Prop, uh, which was released from the main spacecraft. It descended to the near the south pole of the Moon and uh, while doing so it has collected the uh, fine signatures of the mass spectrum. Uh, with a very rare, uh, it's not atmosphere, it's rare uh, trace gases which is present in the hard vacuum there and uh, that's a